Now we're going to take a look at the ACE inhibitors and the angiotensin receptor blockers. ACE inhibitors um, and angiotensin um, receptor blockers are commonly used in the treatment of patients with hypertension. In addition, these drugs have been shown to prolong survival in patients with heart failure, coronary heart disease, and acute MIs. They slow the rate of progression of chronic renal failure and particularly diabetic neuropathy. These medications are indicated um, for hypertension, heart failure, coronary heart disease, and acute MIs. They also um, slow, again, slow the rate of progression of chronic renal failure and particularly diabetic neuropathy. So let's start um, with the ACE inhibitors. These drugs block angiotensin converting enzyme, which is responsible for the conversion of angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. Remember, angiotensin II is a potent vasoconstrictor and is a stimulus for aldosterone release from the adrenal glands. Reduction in the aldosterone secretion results in less water absorption and sodium potassium exchange in the distal renal tubule. This causes a slight increase in, increase in serum potassium. ACE inhibitors inhibit the breakdown of bradykinin, a potent and naturally occurring vasodilator, by blocking the enzyme kinase, kinase 2, I'm sorry. This is thought to be the cause of um, the cough that's commonly experienced in patients taking um, this class of drugs. The ARB's um, mechanism of action, they block the effects of angiotensin II by binding, blocking the binding of the angiotensin II to its receptors. They do not affect the bradykinin. So as you can see in this, um, this where the ACE inhibitors versus the ARB's work. The ACE inhibitors work um, between the angiotensin I to angiotensin II. Um, and the ARBs work from the angiotensin II um, to the aldosterone um, pathway. There are two types of angiotensin receptors that have been identified, um, the angiotensin one and the angiotensin II. The angiotensin um, receptor blockers are more active against the angiotensin 1 receptors than they are, than are the ACE in inhibitors. The ACE inhibitors is not associated with increased levels of angiotensin 2 as are um, the angio um, ARBs. ACE inhibitors may increase um, angiotensin 1 levels but ACE inhibitors also increase the levels of bradykinin, which may contribute to their side effects in contrast to the ARBs. The pharmacologic effects of ACE inhibitors produce a reduction in systemic vascular resistance and have no effect or moderate increase in the cardiac output. For this reason, blood pressure is lowered. So for um, the ACE inhibitors, um, or the mechanism of action for hypertension, um, the pharmacologic effects of the ACE inhibition produces a reduction in systemic uh, vascular resistance. Um, it has no effect or moderate increase in the cardiac output. Blood pressure is lowered through decreased systemic vascular resistance, and blood pressure reduction is not accompanied by changes in heart rate. Renal perfusion is also increased, and renal vascular resistance is decreased. However, the glomular filtration rate is usually unchanged. In patients with heart failure syndrome, ACE inhibitors significantly decrease the preload by reducing sodium and water retention. 
This is done through reduction of aldosterone secretion and reduce afterload through their effects on the angiotensin II, decreasing systemic vascular resistance. This causes a modest increase in ejection fracture and a decrease in ventricular and diastolic pressure and volume. This in turn improves myocardial energy metabolism. The ACE inhibitors also act um, on the renal vasculature to reduce arterial resistance. This improves the renal hemodynamics. This may improve the course of patients with diabetic neuropathy and other renal diseases with glomular hypertension. The ACE escape phenomenon may be seen in some patients when alternate enzyme pathways are used for formation of angiotensin II, thus increasing the benefit of ARBs. So what are the treatment principles? An advantage of the ACE inhibitors and the ARBs is their relative lack of serious adverse reactions compared with other drugs for hypertension and angina. The most common and often treatment limiting side effect of the ACE inhibitors is cough. This cough is persistent, dry, and hacking and is seen in up to 20% of the patient taking ACE inhibitors. The ARBs were developed in part to eliminate the side effect and clinical trials have demonstrated this benefit. The most serious and potentially life-threatening adverse reaction is angioedema, which occurs in approximately 0.1 to 0.7 percent of patients. However, because ACE inhibitors are used so often, uh, current clinical practice guidelines suggest that the use of ACE inhibitors should be ruled out for anyone who comes into the emergency department with angioedema. The main distinguishing clinical features of ACE inhibitors induced angioedema is older age and absence of an allergic history. ARBs are often reserved as alternatives to ACE inhibitors for patients who cannot tolerate um, an ACE inhibitor. In addition, overall costs are reduced because of the availability of generic ACE inhibitors. Other serious adverse effects of the ACE inhibitors in the ARBs include hyperkalemia, hypotension, and acute renal failure. Abrupt withdrawal of these agents has not resulted in um, rebound hypertension. The antihypertensive effects of the ARBs have proved comparable to those of the ACE inhibitors. ACE inhibitors and ARBs are of particular value for the treatment of hypertensive patients who have um, other illnesses such as diabetes, renal insufficiency, left ventricular dysfunction, and CHF. 50 to 60 percent of white patients will have a good response to ACE inhibitors. Um, this is comparable with the results reported with other first-line antihypertensive drugs. Some African-American patients do not appear to respond as well um, in terms of blood pressure reduction, but cardioprotective or nephroprotective effects still can be seen. In addition of the low-dose thiazide diuretic often allows for efficacy in blood pressure lowering that is comparable with that seen in whites. Blood pressure reduction may be progressive with maximal effects achieved in two to four weeks. An additional advantage of the ACE inhibitors is regression of left ventricular hypertrophy. However, in all hat, um, heart attack trial, which is an antihypertensive and lipid lowering treatment to prevent heart attack, um, an ACE inhibitor was shown to be less cardioprotective than thiazide diuretics. ACE inhibitors have been shown to increase insulin sensitivity and to mod modestly lower plasma glucose levels. They also minimize or prevent diuretic-induced elevations in cholesterol and uric acid levels. Another possible um, benefit of the ACE inhibitors um, may be their ability to reduce the incidence of new onset 
diabetes. Multiple clinical trials um, suggest that ACE inhibitors are more likely to prevent diabetes than any of the other antihypertension agents, and three major trials are currently underway to determine whether ACE inhibitors and ARBs or combination therapy is more effective than other antihypertensives in preventing the onset of diabetes. Their action may be complicated by the use of statins, which may increase the risk of diabetes. Um, so ACE inhibitors prevent ventricular remodeling and improve endothelial function after MIs. They also decrease the action of fibrin, thereby reducing clotting. Um, the ACC and AHA, AHA guidelines for the management of ST elevation MIs recommends ACE inhibitors should be initiated within 24 hours of presentation in patients who are stable. ACE inhibitors have been clinically proven to improve survival of patients with serum creatinine concentrations above 3 milligrams per deciliter. Concurrent aspirin therapy attenuated the benefit of these patients. Those who should not be given an ACE inhibitor include patients um, with allergies, renal failure, hypotension, um, systolic blood pressure less than 90 to 100 millimeters, or systolic pressure 30 millimeters below baseline. Those who um, experience shock, history of bilateral renal artery stenosis, or prior worsening of renal function with ACE inhibitors. Patients with renal insufficiency may be prescribed ACE inhibitors in these um, settings. A landmark trial that supported ACE inhibitors in patients at high cart risk for cardiac events um, is the HOPE trial. This trial examined the benefit of an ACE inhibitor Remapril or placebo for existing therapy in 9,541 high-risk patients older than the age of 55. The trial was stopped after four and a half years because the remipril had been shown to significantly reduce the primary endpoint, cardiovascular mortality, non-fatal MI, stroke, and new cases of diabetes. The benefits of remipril were seen within the first year and were independent of age and gender. These benefits were apparent in patients with significant comorbidities that included impaired left ventricular function, diabetes mellitus, documented coronary heart disease, or a prior MI, peripheral vascular disease, or stroke. Results that emerged from the HOPE trial are comparable to those seen in clinical trials of satin drugs. ACEs should not be given to many patients um, with symptomatic or asymptomatic heart failure. These agents reduce ventricular dilatation, restore the heart to its normal elliptical shape, and reverse ventricular remodeling. Um, they induce a more favorable hemodynamic state by reducing preload, afterload, heart rate, systemic blood pressure, and renal vascular resistance. Uh, one of the greatest benefits of ACE inhibitors therapy is its ability to reduce peripheral, peripheral vascular resistance and lower blood pressure without compromising cardiac output. These agents also increase renal blood flow, which causes um, diuresis. Um, and before therapy is initiated, the patient should be well hydrated to prevent renal failure. I believe I said that ACE inhibitors should not be given, but they should be given with patients with symptomatic or asymptomatic heart failure. A meta-analyst meta of more than 12,000 patients found that ACE inhibitors have been clinically proven to reduce total mortality um, by preventing deaths from progressive heart failure. Um, they've also been found to lower the number of hospital readmissions for heart failure and reduce the incidence of MIs. 
The benefit was evident soon after treatment was begun, and this benefit increased over longer than four years. ARBs appear to be as effective or possibly slightly less effective than the ACE inhibitors for the treatment of heart failure when compared directly. The benefits of ACE inhibitors for the African American population have, have not been as strong as for those of other populations. Two major trials um, found that African Americans had higher rates of progressive heart failure and overall um, mortality. ACE inhibitors and ARBs have been proven to slow the progression, progression of diabetic neuropathy. Although most clinical trials have explored the use of ARBs and ACE inhibitors, um, the ACE inhibitors are believed to confer similar efficacy. With the exception of pregnancy and breastfeeding, these drugs should, not, should be given to some patients with diabetes who have microalbuminuria or macroalbuminuria. So how do we monitor um, these patients? All patients should have a baseline and periodic electrolyte panel, um, including serum, sodium, potassium, and total CO2, serum, blood urea, nitrogen, creatinine, and urinalysis. Once the dosage is stable, serum, creatinine, and potassium should be checked after um, two and four weeks. Patients without risk factors for renal deterioration should have these parameters checked every three to six months during stable maintenance therapy. Periodically, um, white blood cells need to be monitored for leukopenia because these drugs have been found um, to cause leukopenia in some patients. The patient should be monitored um, supine blood pressure weekly while titrating the dose. Patients with severe hypertension should be monitored more frequently during the initial titration period. Uh, patient can develop angioedema in, this, in these drugs. Um, this potentially life-threatening complication is common to all ACE inhibitors and develops through the mechanism of action of the drugs. It typically involves the mouth, lips, tongue, larynx, and pharynx, pharynx, as well as the subglottic tissue. Uticaria is absent, and more than 50% of the cases occur within one week of treatment initiation. Some cases have been reported to occur after several years of therapy. Um, patients who appear to be at the highest risk are those who are older than age 65, have a history of a drug rash, or have seasonal allergies along with African Americans. Angioedema um, is not related to the ACE inhibitor induced cough. Many of these individuals will also be taking digoxin. Um, serum digoxin levels um, need to not exceed one nanogram per milliliter, particularly in women. Um, it, they can become toxic um, due to the reaction with the ACE inhibitors. Because ACE inhibitors um, and ARBs may cause hyperkalemia in patients with renal failure, these drugs should be avoided or should be used only with great caution when serum creatinine levels are higher than 2.5 milligrams per deciliter when glomerular filtration, filtration rates are less than 30 mils per minute, um, or when potassium levels are higher than 5 milli equivalents per liter. Benicar um, may be associated with malabsorption, resulting in severe diarrhea and weight loss. Weight should be monitored closely in these patients. The drug is now on uh, the FDA watch list. Um, for patient variables, um, geriatric patients, uh, you need to use these drugs are useful in the elderly. A lower dose may be needed in patients with renal or hepatic insufficiency. You should evaluate the patients um, for volume depletion prior to initiating ACE inhibitor therapy. Pediatric um, safety and effective, effectiveness of ACE inhibitors has not been established in children. Um, but erbesartan um, is indicated in children older than six years of age.
For those um, women who are pregnant or lactating, uh, the use of ACE inhibitors and um, ARBs in all stages of pregnancies is associated with significant fetal risk. Major congenital malformations, in particular cardiovascular and central nervous system abnormalities, were seen more often in infants exposed to ACE inhibitors during the first trimester when compared to other antihypertensive agents. These drugs can cause fetal and neonatal morbidity and death. Um, they should be discontinued as soon as possible after the patient becomes pregnant, and several ACE inhibitors have been found in breast milk. It is not known whether um, lisinopril ex is excreted in human breast milk. Um, according to the manufacturer, because of the potential uh, for serious reactions in nursing infants, a decision should be made to either discontinue breastfeeding or discontinue uh, the lisinopril. Captopril and enalapril are classified by the American Academy of Pediatrics as usually compatible with breastfeeding and may represent reasonable alternatives to certain in certain clinical situations, especially when nursing or newborn, a newborn or preterm infant. Lisinopril has not been evaluated by the American Academy of Pediatrics. Uh, for patient education, um, you need to um, tell the patient if they need to take a missed dose as soon as possible. They should skip the missed dose if it's almost time for the next dose and not to take two doses at the same time. Common side effects um, include nonproductive cough, dizziness, and lightheadedness. This cough is less common in the ARBs. The patient should call the practitioner immediately if any of these ser of, um, serious adverse effects occur, such as swelling of the face, mouth, hands, tongue, or feet, difficulty breathing or swallowing, hives, severe itching, fainting, clouding of the urine, sore throat, fever, and sudden onset of abdominal pain, diarrhea, and vomiting. This would indicate um, intestinal edema in an adult. Signs of excess potassium in the body um, include a regular heartbeat, wet, leg weakness, numbness or tingling of the hands or feet, and extreme nervousness. Patient needs to be um, educated um, for the need to um, stop the medication and call the um, healthcare provider immediately. The patient should avoid use of potassium containing medications or sub salt substitutes while on this medication.